Hi, welcome everybody to another Addo Free video. Uh, we're having a nice sunny afternoon in Sydney at the moment, so just thought we'd come out and do a video at a nice location. A nice blue sky today, it's around 18 degrees in winter, so it's a little bit windy today, so I hope it doesn't affect the microphone too much. Uh, yeah, today we're going to talk about the pointy end of the Addo Free, so uh, I haven't seen too many videos done on that side of the bonnet, but today I'm hopefully I can spread some information that might help people you, uh, get to know your, your car a bit better. So first thing we got to do is lift the bonnet and in order to, probably most people have probably never even done that before but what you have to do you have to pull the wood release twice to get the bonnet to come up. So I'm just going to do that now. So I'm just going to lift up the bonnet now. This bonnet is really heavy. I'm really looking forward to putting some gas struts on here so I don't have to keep lifting this all the time. Alrighty, so out of the bonnet, probably start with uh, the 12 volt battery, which is right here. It's a really small battery. And um, some of the, the original software that came out with this car uh, tended to, to um, drain the battery below 12 volts, which wasn't very good for the batteries. So they've since improved that because they've had a few battery failures. So they've, they have addressed that in later, uh, latest versions of the software, now 1.5 as well. So hopefully we don't get any more problems with batteries. But if you do, it's really handy if you have a small um, uh, battery, which I'll show you now, and if you ever need to jumpstart your car. Okay, so here's the jump starter that I actually managed to purchase. And all you have to do is turn it on. <laughs> pretty, pretty basic stuff. Plug this in and you quickly just lift up this. And that's, that's your positive. So the red goes on the positive, black goes on the negative. And this little battery should get you going if your, if your 12 volt battery ever goes flat. So um, that's one thing I, I wanted to show everybody just in case no one's ever jumped out of a car before. So here's the, here's the electric motor for the car. The actual electric, this is the top part, which I believe is the, um, the rectifier or the com D AC, the AC to DC converter. Um, these two thick cables are your DC charge cables that come in from the side, from the side of the car. And underneath those, you've got your thin AC cables for your other, for your slow charging that also come in. And this top section of, of with BYD, all the electronics and the motors all built into one unit. So, which is a really good from a serviceability point of view. So, it's not, so, um, so yeah. So, so that when the when the power goes in. It either goes through the charge, goes through the electronics and gets converted to DC to charge the battery or in the case of uh, the DC cables here they just go straight in and then the car tells the, how, mu how much current the battery wants to draw and goes directly to the battery. Um, so once all the power's in the battery and the car wants to, uh, when you want to drive the car, DC from the battery goes back into this circuitry and I believe the motors in these cars are AC which means that it's, the DC power gets converted to AC and then it goes into the motor to drive the car. Um, over here on the right hand side this is BYD's version of the Tesla Octo valve. So this is your um, cooling for your, for your motor and your battery also your air conditioning inside the car. So all these little solenoids here actually route the route the cooling gas, I believe, to whichever part of the whichever part of the um, car is needed. So we've got how many we've got? One, two, three, four, five, five. I think that's one there. Six. So there's around six solenoid valves in this one. Uh, so that's all your that's all your cooling. Um, over this side, this is your, this is a, I believe this one's a Bosch unit. This is your braking, um, regenerative braking or your braking, um, 
equipment, which, yes, yeah, it provides, it's a bit different from a normal car because it actually um, has the um, regenerative braking built in. So these are the um, lines that go to your brakes and this, this unit here, yeah, has something, is, is all the regenerative braking um, equipment. Um, over this side, this little latch here, this little latch here is your um, charge port release door in case you can't get your charge port open. You can pull on this. I've had to do this once and the cable never went back to its right spot. So, um, you know, if you're ever stuck and you can't open your charge door and you've tried to unlock the car, lock the car, uh, all those sorts of things that you have to do first. We've computerized devices, turn it on and off. If everything fails, pull that, pull that lever and the door will open. I got a bit impatient one day, so I just pulled the lever. So, okay. Um, so, uh, the front of the car is pretty easy to pull off. And so you can't really see much, but we just got a normal Just in here, just in here, we just in here we've got a full-size radiator. From it's a bit of a throwback from a ice car, I think. Uh, and then at the front here, at the front here, we've got the horn. Dolphin is coming out with a 70 kilowatt motor soon. So it should be a so 70 kilowatt you expect it to be yeah, half the size of this motor and so that should make the dolphin a lot lighter in the front. Uh, over here we have the little I, I believe this is the little uh, kind of like a, a gearbox which is I think it's almost a one-to-one -one gearbox so it's just two so it just basically takes the power from the electric motor and transfers it onto the CV joints which is just down there for your front for your front wheels to turn uh, over, over here is the uh, all the fuses pretty common for regular cars to have a big fuse box in the front um, your brake fluid here and your coolant for your radiator is here and you've got windscreen wiper there so yeah, it's it's about all I, I can't think of much else to talk about under the car here. Um, so yeah, so in my so a lot of people are considering putting frunks in the car, and I think that's a really good idea. Um, some people are a bit concerned about heat generated uh, by that, but electric motors are a little bit different from um, internal combustion engines in that. They don't actually make any heat, they're very efficient. So 90, 95, 96% efficiency is if you do want to um, get a front for your car to put extra stuff, put your charge cables and stuff in here instead of in the boot, it'll be really handy. But the idea of, I'm, I'm considering doing it, but I want to do the gas struts first. Once I get the gas struts done, I'll, I'll, I'll think about if I've got a better option in the future, but I, I just don't want to be lifting and putting this bonnet down all the time because it's a real hassle. It's, it's really heavy and I really don't like doing it. Uh, that's about all I've got to say for on, the, on this video. So I hope you've learned something about the, uh, the car. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please like and subscribe. And um, yeah, I'm hoping to get a thousand subscribers soon. So that will be, that would be really good. So thanks for your support. On the, on the channel and I'm almost at a thousand subscribers so yeah, hopefully I can finally get there and if you're ever down this way the, the nice people rangers came down to see to see if I needed a jump start because I had the bonnet up so really nice people here and uh, just, just gonna leave you with a nice nice view of the water Everyone has a, has a nice weekend and uh, I'll see you in the next video.